So next, um, as you can see in your program, we have a special speaker today. We're very um, honored to have. Um, she is a not only a Mulat Council 688 member, but she's also been very instrumental in the Latino community here in Houston. Um, her name is Judge Josefina Rendon, and she has uh, many firsts in her title in history. So she's an attorney, and uh, she was actually one of Harris County's first Hispanic women attorneys. Go, women power, yes. <laughs> She was actually first woman and first Hispanic Civil Service Commissioner for the city of Houston in the 80s. She came, became the third Latina municipal judge in Houston and has remained a municipal judge for over 28 years. She is a <coughs> trained mediator and um, has, um, a, 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 she's been a leader in the dispute resolution uh, area. Um, she is married to Mr. Ruben Rendon, and they have a son and a daughter and two beautiful grandchildren. She is a former uh, board president of SARE, which is a wonderful organization, Jobs for Progress, and um, a longtime member, as I said, of uh, League of United Latin American Citizens, LULAC. So we're very excited for her to come and speak. She's going to talk about the importance of education in the Latino community. So, Jeff. Hello everybody. Hello. Uh, thank you for inviting. I feel honored to be here, and uh, you know, really appreciate the uh, the honor. And I was asked to uh, talk about education, the statistics, and the importance of education. And at first, I thought, well, I'm not an educator, so maybe I'm not the right person to be talking about this. And then I thought that actually, I was involved in one of the two most important lawsuits for Hispanic uh, dealing with uh, education for Hispanic students in Texas. And actually, my husband was involved in the other uh, of the two most important uh, <coughs> decisions made uh, regarding uh, education of Hispanic students. So I want to talk a little bit about that, and then I want to talk about you know, the, the present and the reality today. Um, one of the uh, uh, lawsuits was called uh, Ross versus Houston Independent School District. And that uh, lawsuit was uh, brought in the uh, uh, mid-60s. And it was the lawsuit that desegregated the schools here. And what happened was that back when in the 60s, again, the schools were des uh, desegregated, and the minority students were getting a much more inferior education than the white students. And so they were ordered to integrate. And so they said, OK, well, Hispanics are considered white. And um, so we're going to put the Hispanic students and the black students together. And so the inf inferior education kept on uh, for um, the minority students uh, while they were claiming to have integrated the schools. And so my husband actually, because he worked for the Mexican American Legal uh, Defense and Education Fund, he was actually the local count, became the local counsel in the 70s uh, for the Hispanic students. And so that lawsuit that started in the mid 60s actually ended in the early 80s, believe it or not, where finally a decision was made that enough progress was being made. Uh, in the area of integration. I don't know about inequality of education for minorities. I don't know that's it. They've changed a lot, but uh, some uh, progress has been made. So that was one of the lawsuits. Uh, and again, my husband was involved in that. Another lawsuit was uh, Plyler v. Uh, uh, Doe, and in which um, that one, even if public education, uh, education was actually the law, if you did not go to, uh, to if you didn't change, change, send your children to school, then you could be charged with a criminal offense. Um, but actually, um, there, somebody decided that undocumented children did not have the right to a free education. And so I was involved in that lawsuit somewhat in that I um, co-wrote the brief, what they call the amicus brief, the uh, friend of the court uh, brief that the Mexican-American uh, Bar uh, Association of Houston uh, wrote uh, to support that the children should be uh, given an education like all the other children. So maybe I can talk. <laughs> And 
I'm happy to say that undocumented children, uh, the Supreme Court of uh, the United States decided that the undocumented children should have a free education. So uh, anyway, so I, uh, uh, I guess I can talk a little bit about education. And I wanted to say some of the good news about education. And that's the statistics that you asked me to talk about. And uh, here, uh, as I understand it, high school dropouts uh, have gone down. And so before, the um, um, uh, Hispanic students had a very high uh, high school uh, dropout rate, and it has gone down. So more and more um, uh, Hispanic students are graduating from high school than, than, than they used to. And so that is uh, great. And then from 1996 to 2012, a college enrollment about among Hispanics more than tripled. A 240 percent increase, and that's from very low to not so low anymore. That we still have to. <laughs> also, from the first time in 2012, the Hispanic enrollment rate among 18-year-olds to 24-year-old Hispanic students, high school students, uh, went neck and neck with white uh, students going in enrollment in uh, in in, uh, uh, in college. And by 2012, a record uh, seven in 10 Hispanic high school students enrolled in college. And so that is a great uh, you know, uh, increase and, and advancement. And, um, but there's not so good news also, and that is partly good and partly bad. And part of it is that the unemployment among Latinos aged 16 to 24 has gone um, uh, higher. In other words, there's more and more um, high school, uh, young Hispanic students who are, are not finding jobs. So it does not, doesn't sound like good news, but at the same time, because they're not finding jobs, maybe that's what's convincing them to go to school. So there's maybe a, you know, a, a silver lining among the bad news. But there's also bad news, and let me see if I can find it among my uh, notes here. Bad news, yes. And even, if the, <laughs> even if the Hispanic college enrollment went up, Hispanics are t still less likely to enroll in a, um, a school that uh, that has four years, they get, tend to enroll in a two-year um, associate degree school rather than the four-year school, and they tend also to, even if they enroll in the four-year school, tend to not graduate as often as they should. So that's bad news. Um, and then also, Hispanic students are less likely to enroll full-time than uh, majority students. Uh, there's also still. A, a big gap between the number of Hispanics adult holding adults holding a degree compared to the rest of the population. So there's a lot more that we can still uh, do about our college education. And so, uh, let's see. Another thing is that other groups think of us as being uneducated. And I remember here. 40 somewhat years ago when I was in El Paso. And I remember a college professor of mine said, I noticed your accent. And I had a higher, I mean, I still have an accent, but even worse then. And he said, I don't think you're going to make it in my class. My class is difficult, you know? And so I proved him wrong. And, uh, and I, uh, I did a, a great, you know, um, Great, so uh, I proved him wrong. But it's interesting that you would think that 40 somewhat years later, that people would um, think of us different, that they would see that we're you know, just as educated as everybody else. But just this week, I uh, was in a mediation. And I'm a mediator, but this time I was not there as a mediator. I was there because a lawyer in my husband's office um, at the last minute lost his interpreter. So I went there as an interpreter. Uh, because I can speak both languages. And so I'm there you know, translating like the best of them because I can speak both languages just as well. And uh, one of the lawyers came into the room and I was nobody there and neither was the client. The only person who was somebody there was the lawyer. And then it was interesting to find out at, after, uh, as the conversation between the lawyer and the other lawyer, <coughs> our lawyer and their, their lawyer, 
uh, came about. Then our lawyer told him that I not only was a, law a lawyer, but also a former district judge. <laughs> and it was interesting to see the change. And I've seen that throughout my whole professional career. How people, again, assume that we're not educated when we are just as much or more than they are. And so, I want you all to remember that, uh, to try to do your best. So, my final words to you all the young people who are here today. And I want to let you know that you're getting these awards, but that you're not, we're not giving them to you for free, okay? We expect something from you in return. And this is it. We want you to work hard at it and graduate and do the best you can. We want you also to keep learning for the rest of your adult life as much as you can and become as educated as you can and show them. And then finally, pay it forward and make sure that you do to others what is being done to you today and do the best you can to help others behind you. And with that then, good luck and congratulations for getting back.